So I have noticed something really interesting here with the new Jeep. So I'm using this, uh, this makeshift plumb line here. I tied some washers down there and I've got a tape measure out there also. And what I have noticed is if I, if I just take this and put it right here on the fender and hold it, the line is perfectly flush as soon as those washers quit you know bobbing back and forth um, the line ends up being perfectly flush man i gotta get those washers to quit moving <laughs> but anyway you can take my word for it when they stop swinging the line is perfectly flush with the uh, outside sidewall of the tire and I checked both of the rear tires on both sides and they're perfectly flush. So all three of those come right out flush with the fenders. It's a little bit of a uh, optical illusion because it looks like they're tucked in, but the plumb line, as they say, does not lie. So those are all perfectly flush. But when I come over to the passenger side front and do the same thing, let me uh, get these to stop bobbing. What you'll notice here is that there's actually quite a bit of distance between the sidewall of the tire and the plumb line. And when I put the tape measure on there, we're actually talking about a half inch. So the reason that's interesting is because that shows you know, and I'm parked here in my driveway because that's the only place I know is nice and flat and even. So what that shows is that from the factory, the center line of the front axle is moved over toward the driver's side just a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. You would have to take the front axle and move it toward the passenger side one quarter of an inch to perfectly center it up. And the reason that's interesting is because I was mentioning on my way home that this Jeep has the really terrible handling characteristics where it wanders all over the road and you have to constantly, you know, put input into the steering wheel to get it to run straight down the road. Uh, the Gladiator I had last time didn't have that problem. The Wrangler JL I had before that did have that problem. It was horrible. Um, so that's, that's kind of a curious thing to me. Uh, I wonder if the, uh, if the uh, front axle not being perfectly centered, I wonder if that has anything to do with the steering characteristics that I've noticed. You know what I mean? Uh, that could potentially be the reason why the steering feels so vague on this. I don't know. Just a, just a theory I'm putting out there. You know, you'd have to go... Uh, and put the tape measure and the plumb line on a whole lot of these Jeeps to see if they're different or if they're all the same. You know, you'd have to do a lot of uh, legwork to figure this out. But I just thought that was interesting that the front axle is not centered from the factory. Now, if we crawl under here and look, the, uh, the frame side of the track bar is over on the driver's side over there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's, well, I've even kind of lost it myself right here. That's the uh, frame side of the track bar. And then the axle side, of course, is over here on the passenger side of the vehicle. It's kind of hard to see up under here, I know. But um, that's kind of neat to, uh, to see because what that means, what that means is that if you and I'm getting ready to, if you put a lift on the front of this Jeep, if you put a leveling spacers or a lift of any kind on the front of this Jeep as it sits right now, it's only going to make that problem worse. It's gonna drag this front axle even farther toward the driver's side, uh, which means it's going to be even more uncentered under the vehicle. So if you have one of these Gladiators, or it would be true even for a Wrangler, if you have one of these that is off-centered from the factory keep in mind that if you lift the front end it's going to make that condition even worse so now i understand uh, why a lot of guys are spending the extra money to get a kit that has 
an adjustable track bar included with the kit because obviously if you've got an adjustable track bar for the front end you can fix this problem uh, the kit that i ended up ordering is just a very basic daystar um, spacer kit i'm going to get started with that just to kind of level the truck out and keep the factory geometry as close as i can to stock for now because i'm going to be doing a lot of hauling and towing and i don't want to raise my center of gravity a whole lot right now so that's the kit that I ordered, but I'm starting to think that maybe I need to at least order an adjustable front track bar because that is going to have to be centered up and fixed. Um, that's, that's something I'm going to have to do. And uh, like I said, I'm really curious uh, to see if that's going to be the steering issue on this thing. That's something that I haven't really heard a lot of guys talk about. You know, I've heard guys talk about steering boxes and uh, steering stabilizers and software flashes and all these different things don't think i've ever even heard it mentioned that these things could be uh, as far as the axle goes could be off center from the factory that, that definitely would do it so anyway there's your little nugget for the day i thought that was kind of interesting and what started this whole thing is i was going to take measurements for the possibility of wheel spacers or aftermarket wheels so i just wanted to always start by doing that measurement you know that way you know what you're working with from stock and then you can visualize you know what different offset wheels would look like on there that's why i started doing this and then when i noticed that the axle was not centered i was like huh that's interesting so today i spent the day just trying to do some uh, quick little odds and ends that i wanted to get done on this jeep i got the front doors tinted uh, they put a 20 percent on the front doors which is the closest thing they had to match what comes on the rear doors from the factory and visually i think it looks pretty good i mean to me it seems like it matches up almost perfect uh, when you get inside the truck you can tell that it's just a little bit darker but that's because the front glass does have some uv coating in it uh, it's not necessarily tinted but it does have a, a uv protective coating in there so when you put the tint on top of that it does make it look a little bit darker uh, but see, even from the inside, it, it looks pretty close. I mean, it's matched up about as well as you can do. So I like the 20% tint on the front doors. Matches pretty good. And then I had to call Sirius XM and get all my uh, subscription uh, and account information moved over from the Ram to the Jeep. So I got that done. I had to call the insurance lady and have my uh, insurance policy switched over to the Jeep. And as I was expecting my insurance premiums went back up uh, these jeeps are just really expensive to insure you know that ram that i had the sticker price on it was identical to the sticker price on this truck and it was a bigger nicer truck with more features i mean it was sweet but it was much less expensive to insure in fact we're talking on the order of like 300 dollars a year that's how much my insurance policy uh, my premium went up when i switched from the ram to the jeep gladiator so fyi if you're going to get one of these trucks be prepared to pay a hefty premium for the insurance on them um, i you know there's a lot of reasons for that it's a convertible it's a off-road vehicle which is kind of you know it's a that's a ding they put on you uh, it's a little bit less safe in fact these things haven't even really been safety tested i don't know how they do it but somehow jeep continues to prevent this thing from going through safety testing so it doesn't even have a safety score whereas the ram is a five star safety rated truck so there's a lot of things working against these jeeps i guess that's why the insurance goes sky high on them but it is what it is as the old saying goes so i got all this kind of stuff done this administrative stuff i just got to get my new insurance cards and stick them in here but uh yeah i mean i'm getting reacclimated to the jeep it gave me a good excuse to clean up all my junk that I had in the console. I mean, there are so many storage areas and cubby holes all over that Ram that you end up accumulating massive amounts of stuff. And it gave me a good excuse to just kind of pare all that down to only what I needed. So back here, this is where the biggest difference is as far as space goes is back here in the back. And I just uh, pared it down to my uh, ratchet straps that you need whenever you're hauling and towing good idea to have some bungee for uh some little bungee cords here i got a range poncho in case i get stuck out in a storm and i have to you know do something on the side of the road or whatever tow strap just some emergency stuff this is my folder that i bought from amazon to keep all my service records and everything in 
and uh, then on the other side under the seat i've got a tire plug kit flashlight and a couple of other little emergency items but yeah i've kind of really consolidated it down to a much smaller amount of stuff because i mean i mean look how much space there is in here compared to the ram almost none <laughs> so i kind of have to uh kind of have to do that and then i just got my work gloves and a flashlight up here so like i said it's it's good to go to uh, to simplify things and to to use that as an excuse to make everything a little bit simpler in the console here i got my work badge and my concealed carry and then uh over there in the glove box all i've got is the owner's manual now so the only thing i'm still working on oh and i got my scan gauge mounted right here which actually is a perfect spot for it because it does not really interfere uh, like when i'm in the driver's seat it doesn't interfere with my view at all but i can still get to it easily so that worked out really good um, so the only thing i still have to do is find some way to charge my phone in the ram i had that really sweet spot down there for my wireless charging pad and in the jt there's just not really a good spot to put it i mean i could mount it up here on the dash but then i have a feeling the phone would fall off of it every time i you know take off quickly or hit the brakes quickly it would slide off of there so and of course there's no console space at all so i still got to work on that i got to figure out some way to do the wireless charging which was nice the sales lady showed me this thing you can buy that replaces the uh, console lid with a new lid that has a charging pad right here in the middle of the lid it's 350 bucks kind of expensive but that was really cool so eventually i may look into that and then i got my seat belt extender put in to defeat the stupid auto park system so i think i'm pretty much converted over uh getting it to where i wanted it to be so now i just got to put the lift on there i'm going to put some splash guards on there to protect my doors from all of these rocks out here on these gravel roads got to get the tires put on and then uh, a couple more little items uh, for towing the trailer and then we'll be just about ready to go for the first round of mods so i'm crawling around underneath of the gladiator just checking things out and if you want to know why it is that the Gladiator Eco Diesel is only 300 pounds less curb weight than the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, even though the Ram is a much bigger truck, well, here's part of the reason why. Lots and lots of skid shields. They have everything underneath this Jeep fully armored. I mean, it's unbelievable. You start here with the fuel tank, which is completely encased in steel, even up on the back side of it up there, even back here. I mean, the entire diesel fuel tank is completely encased. If you look over there, the uh, selective catalyst, the emissions equipment, all you know protected by bracketry and skid shields you look uh, up in front of the uh, fuel tank up there where the diesel exhaust fluid tank is and up toward the transfer case more skid plates i mean this thing has got just almost full sheeting of steel from front to back it's just unbelievable lots and lots of armor kind of looks like a utv under here to be honest you could just about slide over any obstacle with this thing but the drawback is all this stuff adds significant weight of course so if you don't go off road if you just use your truck 99 percent of the time on the road then you know you've got that penalty of all this weight you're dragging around Here's another interesting thing I'm noticing. You can see the butterfly valve up there, right there. Okay, well on the Jeep, it is before this great big muffler up here, but on the Ram, that was not the case. On the Ram, the only thing you had downstream from that valve is just a couple of little bitty resonators by the tailpipes. Um, but in this Jeep, you have this massive muffler right here that's downstream from it. And then you also still have the resonator over there. So what that basically means is on this Jeep, you could take the muffler and the resonator off and straight pipe it from there on out. 
you would probably get more of a gain in sound and maybe even performance uh, from doing that on this Jeep than you would on the Ram. Uh, because like I said, most of this stuff is downstream of that valve on the Jeep, whereas that's not the case on the Ram. So that's, that's another pretty interesting difference. I may end up getting rid of that muffler one of these days. So I'm just kind of waiting on Brown Santa to bring me some of the rest of the stuff. Uh, and then I'll show it to you. Got some pretty neat products coming for the Jeep already. Uh, some of it you may have seen, some of it you probably haven't seen yet. So it'll be neat. Uh, stay tuned for that and I'll show it to you as soon as it gets here. But anyway, I appreciate you watching and uh, hey guys, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.